Echocardiography in pulmonary embolism is useful in several ways. Visualization of thrombi within the right heart or pulmonary arteries would be the most direct way of diagnosing acute pulmonary embolism by echocardiography. Mobile thrombi in the right heart known as tinea cardis detected during echocardiography carries a poor prognosis with higher association with right ventricular dysfunction and mortality. In general, the chance of detection of mobile right heart thrombi in acute pulmonary embolism is about 4%, though up to 18% have been detected in certain intensive care settings. Transesophageal echo can detect thrombi in central pulmonary arteries as well. Hence, it may be a useful investigation when patient is too unstable to be shifted for CT pulmonary angiography. The other group of echocardiographic findings in acute pulmonary embolism are features of right ventricular overload due to sudden rise in pulmonary arterial pressure and right ventricular dysfunction. Tricuspid regurgitation jet velocity is useful to calculate the right ventricular systolic pressure by the Bernoulli equation P equal to 4V squared. Main pulmonary artery, right ventricle, right atrium and inferior vena cava can be seen to be dilated in acute pulmonary embolism. Right ventricular dilatation manifests as an increased RVLV diameter ratio. Relative sparing of right ventricular apex with hypokinesia of right ventricular free wall is known as McConnell's sign. It is considered to have a high positive predictive value though it may not be seen in many cases. A Doppler echocardiographic pattern known as 60 by 60 sign may also be present in pulmonary embolism. In this case, pulmonary flow acceleration time is less than 60 milliseconds and tricuspid regurgitation jet gradient is less than 60 millimeters of mercury but more than 30 millimeters of mercury. Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion measured by M-mode echocardiography is also a useful measure of right ventricular systolic function. Echocardiographic demonstration of right to left shunt across a patent for amenoil would suggest the possibility of occurrence of paradoxical systemic embolism and thereby connote a higher potential for mortality. Echocardiography is also useful in differential diagnosis by demonstrating an alternate diagnosis like massive pericardial effusion with cardiac tamponade or aortic dissection. It may be noted that if severe RV hypertrophy and very high TR jet gradients are seen, it is likely to be a pre-existing severe pH as in chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension rather than acute pulmonary embolism. But a person with chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension can also develop acute worsening due to a fresh bout of embolism. Here are the initial set of references on echocardiography in pulmonary embolism. Remaining references of echocardiography in pulmonary embolism are here. Echocardiographic pulmonary to left atrial ratio. EPLAR is a simple echocardiographic estimation useful in differentiating pre-capillary from post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. EPLAR is TRV max divided by mitral E by E prime ratio. TRV max maximum velocity of tricuspid regurgitation jet by Doppler echocardiography in meters per second. E E wave in the mitral flow Doppler. E prime Septal mitral annular tissue Doppler velocity. E plar values are lower in post capillary pulmonary hypertension. E by E prime reflects left ventricular filling pressure, which is left atrial pressure. TR V max reflects the pulmonary artery systolic pressure. That is how TR V max divided by E by E prime is a pulmonary to left atrial ratio. E plar can be used to triage patients for pulmonary vasodilator therapy non-invasively. It may be noted that right heart catheterization is the gold standard for differentiating pre-capillary from post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is elevated in post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. In a study of 16,356 echocardiograms, normal reference value of E plar was 0.30 plus minus 0.09 meters per second. Elevated e plar in acute submassive pulmonary embolism suggests increased transpulmonary gradients 
even in the absence of acute elevation of pulmonary arterial pressure. Estimation of EPLAR increases the sensitivity of echocardiography in submassive pulmonary embolism. An EPLAR of more than or equal to 0.3 meters per second had a sensitivity of 70%. This is in comparison with 29% sensitivity of TRVMAX more than or equal to 2.9 meter per second and 32% sensitivity for reduced TAPC. Comparison of changes in EPLAR with exercise between Ironman athletes and age match controls showed a two-fold increase in EPLAR. This corresponded to a four-fold increase in pulmonary pressures compared to systemic pressure in Ironman athletes. It is known that though both systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance decreases with exercise, the reduction is more in systemic vascular resistance. As mentioned earlier, EPLAR is a marker of transpulmonary gradient. Authors of the study mentioned that previous data suggested that this can lead to right ventricular dysfunction, right ventricular arrhythmias and even sudden cardiac death in endurance athletes. Here are the first set of journal references. Second set of journal references are here.